If you're wondering where you should live in Edmonton, you're in luck because in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. All the places you can live in Edmonton. So stay tuned. What's up everyone? This is Eric Yip. I'm a local real estate agent here and I talk about eating, sleeping, drinking, everything about Edmonton and I make a lot of videos about it. I have so many people that call me all the time and I just, I'm absolutely ex thrilled and I'm excited about that. So if you're thinking of moving here, reach out to me, shoot me a text, give me a call, email me, even fax me if you really wanted to. Let's get started. So let's go right to the map. Here we go. All right, here is the map of Edmonton. Over here, you have the southeast quadrant of Edmonton. You've got the southwest, you've got the west, you've got south central, you've got downtown, northwest, and northeast. Now, if you actually want something that's a little bit newer, you could go on this, especially on the south side and southwest and even west. A lot of the homes here, so if you look here, I'm gonna blow up the map a little bit here. Uh, you have Summerside, you have Orchards, a lot of, uh, including Walker Lakes, a lot of these areas, you're gonna find some newer construction. So if you wanna build a brand new home, you can definitely do that. Same thing over here, you have Rutherford, um, you have Callahan, and you have Allard. Uh, so there's definitely some new places over here. There's also a newer area called Chappelle Gardens, a uh, very, very new area, uh, uh, Yager Ridge, and also you have uh, Windermere area where you still have a lot of new construction there. Same thing with the West End. You have Glastonbury, Hamptons, The Grange, uh, Seacord, Weber Greens, Rosenthal, and a lot of those areas are, you're gonna find a lot more newer construction. Now, if you actually wanna go up to the north, you're actually gonna be on the interior of the ring road in the northeast area. So places like Shaanxi, Crystalina, McConaughey, Cybecker, these places are definitely going to be newer. Oops, made a boo-boo there. Now, I'm gonna come back here to the south side, first of all. So if you look at the southeast quadrant, you have Millwoods here. Millwoods, I've always said that Millwoods is so big. If you took Millwoods out of Edmonton, it can actually survive on its own. If you look at the map here, this says Millwood Sports Park. Look how big that is. Uh, I actually play tennis there uh, every summer. So if you love tennis, give me a shout. Love to have a game with you. And there's a Millwood's Rec Center there. They have a salted pool. So if you love doing, oh, they have hockey there also. They have gyms. Um, if you look at the, the park there, there's also a, uh, a little lake or pond if you will uh, I remember going there and they have spray parts they have deep ducks and geese there during summertime there's also a skate park there all the kids go there and skate which is very very cool you've got a school here and if you look at uh, Millwoods you have a Grey Nuns Hospital you have a uh, Millwoods Town Center there's multiple banks around here lots and lots and lots of schools and there's also a police station and also a fire station. So if you look at Millwoods, for your best bang for your buck, there's definitely a lot of ethnicity. Uh, and I remember growing up there, actually have uh, got some very fond memories of, it, of Millwoods. The only thing is, sometimes when you get around in Millwoods, it's a little bit tricky because of the roads you've got, like a, a, a uh, let's say a 34A Avenue and a 34B Avenue and sometimes it's just a little bit tricky to get around but other than that um, it, in terms of a uh, good bang for your buck you can definitely it's definitely a good place to find your first starter home there uh, average price in Midwoods I'm gonna say you're looking at about probably 290,000 on average you can get into a bungalow uh, a starter home or a two-story uh, and even a bi-level. Next place, 
If you go a little bit more south, as I mentioned, there's a lot more new construction here, Summerside. There is Aurora, Charlesworth, Ellerslie, Walker Lakes. And uh, in general, homes there, they're probably, a lot of them on average, I'm gonna say, I'd say were built starting around the 2007 period to some homes that are just totally brand new. A lot of those homes, you're gonna see uh, a lot of two stories with de uh, double detach uh, garages, and some of them have uh, double attached garages. A lot of those homes will actually have a bonus room right on top, three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms is quite standard. Uh, average price, you're looking at about probably 400 and I'm gonna say 440,000 as an average there. And if you jump over here to Summerside, what's really cool is there is a big lake here, as you can see. And over here, there's a Summerside Beach uh, Clubhouse where a lot of people go there. They go there to swim. They actually go fishing there every year. Uh, they actually, they fill the, the, um, the lake with, I believe it's trout and as long as you live in Summerside, uh, you can actually have access to it. You can go fishing in the winter time. Once the lake freezes over, you can actually go skating there. They do have a beach here. You can see right here, it's a beach. Um, you can play beach volleyball there. They do have a couple of tennis courts and they also do yoga. There's so many things that you can do there in Summerside. Uh, the one thing you gotta remember is that in places like Summerside, there is what's called a homeowner's association fee. On average, you might be paying anywhere, anywhere from $300 to $600 per year. Uh, that actually gives you access to the lake as well as in terms of the maintenance of all the, the roads, the, the, the trees and everything in the neighborhood, um, that is actually covered. To me, in my opinion, I think that's a very, very good thing. Uh, only because the city does a, a decent job, but they're a little bit slower. So if you actually pay the homeowner owners association fee in your neighborhood, uh, they usually are on top of things a little bit quicker. Now, as we move on, we're going to come over to the southwest. Uh, southwest, we usually in, back in the day we actually would call Riverbend Southwest, but. When you look at Edmonton, things have really expanded to Windermere. You've got the Chappelle area. You've got Rutherford, uh, McEwen. Uh, Rutherford and McEwen, I'm gonna say it's very, very similar to the Southeast side of uh, the neighborhood where you have a lot of the, the two stories with bonus rooms. You've got the front attached garages. And when you come into Chappelle Gardens, um, homes there are very similar to Rutherford and Summerside, except that those homes are going to be even newer because it's actually a very new neighborhood. I remember years ago, we always joked that uh, Edmonton's going to get so big, we're going to touch the airport. Well, it's going to blow this up a little bit. Imagine this was not here before. Here is the airport. And if you look at where things are at, we're slowly creeping to the airport. So, yep, we're definitely getting bigger. Uh, Windermere is another very, very great neighborhood. A lot of those homes are going to be on the larger side. Um, you can definitely find some really big homes. Um, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 square feet. Uh, a lot of those uh, homes are probably going to be in the range of 1.5 million all the way up to probably 4 million. Uh, it's not to say that there aren't other homes that are a little bit smaller, maybe about, uh, let's say 2,500 square feet that you're paying about five to 700,000 on average. And definitely the new Riverbend. Riverbend used to be the place where everyone wanted to be, where a lot of the homes were a lot more expensive, uh, but Windermere's kind of taken over. It really has. Uh, it's not to say that people don't love Riverbend. Riverbend's very, very cool. It's a very nice neighborhood also. What's great about Riverbend is they have a new um, uh, rec center. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, where are you? I think it's right. Yeah. Yes, here it is. Here is the Terwilliger Community Rec Center. Look how big that space is. Uh, they have everything there from uh, volleyball to... 
uh, badminton uh, and hockey and, and, and so on and so forth. So definitely worth checking out. Oh, I was pointing out the wrong thing. Uh, it's actually right here. So there you go. Oh, look how big that is. It's huge. Very, very cool. Moving on. Uh, over here, uh, if you want some newer areas again, you, in the West End, you have Glastonbury, the Hamptons, where a lot of those homes were probably built roughly 15 uh, years ago. And the average price in there, I'm going to say you're probably looking at about 450 Now, over here in the West End, you have the West Edmonton Mall, okay, right here. And West End is such a, it covers a big, big area. You've got Collingwood, um, you've got Collingwood North, you've got Collingwood South, and you've got some, definitely some areas where you have some uh, nicer and bigger homes. If you look at Donsdale, Wedgwood Heights, you do have um, some more larger homes also. Average price in there, I'm gonna say you're probably looking at about five to 600,000 also, where um, you do have some of the Edmonton Oiler hockey players that do enjoy uh, living there. Uh, and then if you move along over here, what's really cool in the West End is uh, a, a really cool area is Laurier Heights. You've got the Edmonton Zoo here, Parkview, Crestwood. In Crestwood, people back then always thought that here's Riverside Drive here, right here. And if you look at this, there's no nothing that obstructs the view of downtown. It's just beautiful. On Canada Day, July 1st, whenever you're there, there are the fireworks. And if you live long here, oh man, the fireworks are just amazing. And oh, going back to what I was saying, uh, Riverside Drive, uh, people always thought that Riverside Drive was in Riverbend, but it's actually not. It's over in Crestwood. A lot of those homes, uh, same thing with the Valley View, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing there. Remember years ago, I sold, uh, we're talking long, long time ago when homes, when a true million dollar home was about five or 6,000 square feet. I remember selling a home in there and it was, it was a big home. It was on a lot and a half and the view, it was just amazing. It, it truly is. So uh, great, great family friendly neighborhood also. And a lot of people love uh, coming here uh, right along 142nd. What's great about the area is that you're actually quite close to downtown. You can hit 142nd and uh, right here on 102nd Avenue, you are not too far from the city center. So I'm gonna say probably you're within about 10, 15 minutes and you can probably hit the city center. Moving on now, uh, over, oop, blowing up a bit too big. Uh, over here, you've got the northwest side of Edmonton. Uh, and same thing here over in the northeast. Uh, if you want something newer again, I think I'm, I don't know if I mentioned, uh, you've got Crystalina, uh, McConaughey, Sidebacker, a lot of these homes are newer. I think I did mention that, I'm gonna come back to that. So, and then if you look at some other areas like Clarvatten, Val Reeve, Ozerna, Matt Berry, a lot of these homes are probably gonna be about, I'm gonna say 20 years old. Some homes in the area, you're gonna find some ginormous homes also. Uh, some homes with uh, vaulted ceilings like by levels uh, currently I've got a, a, a listing in there that is 1800 square foot by level that is a big big by level by the time you have a finished basement you're looking at over 3,000 square feet and a lot of those homes range anywhere from 400,000 all the way to 500,000 definitely a great place to be and yes uh, what else do we have here uh, oh yes, downtown of course. Downtown, great neighborhood. Uh, if you work downtown and you want to enjoy the nightlife, you want to be close to the action, uh, and you enjoy high-rise living, downtown is definitely one place where you want to be. Uh, the only thing is, of course, when you live downtown, uh, a lot of times when you live in a condo, uh, you do have condo fees that are associated with living in a lot of the condo high rises. Now, if I'm going to come a little bit more south, you have the university area, Belgravia, Windsor Park, uh, McKernan. 
very very nice area and a lot of those homes are going to be a little bit older you might have bungalows that are 1500 square feet uh, to 1200 square feet to even larger a lot of those homes are going to be probably closer to eight nine hundred thousand only because of its proximity to the university a lot of people actually buy li like buying properties to uh, for their children for the ease of access to get to university and sometimes they actually buy a property as an investment and they rent it out to university students also now if you look over here Garno Stracona this is White Avenue which is also 82nd Avenue and if you really enjoy especially during summertime they have the farmers market as you can see here Old Strathcona farmers market there are a lot of uh, restaurants there are a lot of um, little mama papa stores a lot of uh, a lot more what's the word I'm looking for uh, a lot more what am I looking for help me out here come on guys um, there are the independent stores that's what I'm the word I'm looking for uh, a lot of people go uh, people enjoy walking along here during summer uh, look over here, Block 1912. I go there to get um, hang out with some friends, and they have some great gelato, which is or gelati, gelato. It's it's ice cream without uh, cream, I think, or something like that. And, but it, it tastes so good, and I love ice cream. Um, and then what else do we have here? Oh, here's another really cool place. So if you come a little bit more south, uh, here's Southgate Center. Uh, here's a really cool area called Malmo Plains and Lendrum Place. A lot of these homes, compared to uh, some other parts of Edmonton, the streets and roads are actually a little bit wider, uh, which means that when you park, instead of squeezing around other vehicles when they're coming around, there's actually enough room to pass each other. Uh, I actually love Malmo Plains, very, very great neighborhood. Uh, the only thing is years ago, I think they did have some water issues with their uh, backyard where some of the backyards they needed to be dug up and the, all the water pipes had to be redone but I do believe that a lot of the places they've been redone now of course over here you've got the, the Southgate shopping center they do have a big transit area here so in terms of getting from one place to another very very easy and also oh the LRT it can get you from uh, over here all the way to the university area and also to downtown one other thing to remember is there is a new LRT uh, line coming all the way down to the Millwoods area and yeah I think it's definitely gonna make it a lot more convenient for people so there you go guys hopefully that was helpful if you enjoyed this video please smash that like button and I'll see you next time